Hello, Abnormal Investigations. Good to see you guys. Got another encounter for you today. Oh, man. It's been a long one. Yesterday, taking that boots on the ground out in the heat with Sarah. It was pretty hot out there, guys. And um, then the premiere last night. What did y'all think about the premiere? Let me know in the uh, comments. All right, let's get into this encounter. I'll never forget that late Friday afternoon when I took a walk in the forest near my house. It was a typical Canadian woods, with all tall trees and the carpet of leaves underneath my feet. I had walked this trail many times before, but this time was different. At first everything seemed normal. The birds were singing and the rustling of leaves filled the air. But as I walked deeper into the woods, the sounds of nature suddenly stopped. It was entirely quiet. I tried to ignore it, and I kept walking, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched and then I heard it a rustling in the brush to my right I got afraid I got scared I'll admit it I heard the twig snapping in the brush I tried to tell myself it was just a rabbit or a squirrel but deep down I knew it probably was not I kept walking my heart beating faster with every step and then it felt it felt like someone was watching me I couldn't see anyone but the feeling the feeling was definitely there and unmistakable. I quickened my pace, my sense on high alert, and then I heard a distant howl followed by a roar that made me almost just want to take off in a run. Please let me know. What do you think is the reason for these warnings they give? Well, I started to run. My feet pounding against the earth, I knew I had to get out of there as fast as I could. But as I ran, I knew I was being chased. I didn't dare look back, fearing what I might see, but I could hear it gaining on me with every step. And then I saw it. A huge, furry creature jumped out onto the path in front of me. It cut me off. Its eyes were fixated on me. It had sharp teeth that were dripping with saliva. I froze. My heart was racing. The creature was unlike anything I'd ever seen or even imagined. It was like a muscular man but with wolf-like features, a muzzle, pointy ears, and a tail that swished back and forth. It stood on its hind legs. Eyes were fixed on me, like it wanted me to run like when a cat watches a mouse. I felt like it was staring, staring right into my heart. For what it felt like hours, we locked eyes. I couldn't move, couldn't breathe. I was paralyzed with fear. And then the creature turned and walked back into the woods. I didn't wait to see where it went. I sprinted toward my car, my heart still pounding in my chest, into my throat, and I could hear it into my ears. I drove away from the woods as fast as I could, not daring to look back. I didn't stop until I was safely inside of my home. But even then I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, and then I heard it a howl, a loud and clear howl right outside of my window. I knew then that it had followed me home. I tried to calm myself down, telling myself it was just my imagination. But then I heard the tap at the window. I froze. My heart skipped a beat or two or three. Who knows? I got sick to the stomach. Slowly, I got up and approached the window. I pulled back the blind. And that's when I seen it, the creature standing outside of my window, looking me right in the face. I was, I was scared, and it was smiling. Its sharp teeth were shining in the moonlight. I knew then that I was in grave danger. I tried to step back, but my feet felt rooted to the spot. The creature started to tap on the window as it stared at me and smiled. I knew I had to do something, but my mind was a blank. And then just suddenly as it appeared, the creature stepped backwards into the darkness, dis disappearing. I collapsed to the floor. I knew I had to tell someone what had happened, but who would believe me? I'd laid there for what felt like hours. I couldn't even feel my legs. They felt like spaghetti. Trying to catch my breath, I knew I had to tell my parents what had happened, but I was scared of what they might think. Would they believe me, or would they just think I was imagining things? Finally, I got up the courage to go downstairs and tell them everything. To my surprise, they listened attentively. Their faces were serious. And they said to me, we'll protect you, my dad said, his voice firm, but you have to promise us one thing. You have to stay away from those woods, my mom said, her eyes looking at me with fear. Whatever is out there is not something to be trifled with. 
I nodded, still trying to process everything that had happened. I knew I had to stay away from the woods, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that the creature would come for me again. And then I started to notice strange things happening around the house. Doors would slam shut on their own, and I would hear footsteps in the house at night that was not my mom or dad. I knew then the creature was still out there watching me, waiting for its chance to strike. I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination, but deep down I knew it was more. The creature was toying with me, playing with my fears. One night, I woke up, found it standing in my bedroom doorway. Its eyes were looking at me, and I could feel its breath on my skin as it walked over to my bed. I froze again, unable to move, my legs feeling the same, and then just as suddenly as it appeared, it vanished. I knew then that I had to take matters into my own hands. I couldn't rely on my parents to protect me forever. I mean, this thing is in the house and they didn't even know. I started researching the supernatural, trying to find a way to defend myself against the creature. I read books on werewolves, vampires, and other monsters, hoping to find a weakness. And then I stumbled upon an ancient ritual that promised to repel any supernatural creature. I knew I had to try it. I gathered the necessary materials and set out to perform the ritual, but as soon as I began, I felt a presence watching me. Then it reappeared. It was laughing at me. I screamed at it. I'm going to do this ritual and get rid of you. It laughed even harder, and it said, You can't get rid of me. I have been here since the skies were dark. I said, You're a werewolf, and I will get silver. I didn't know what to say. I was just trying to scare it. It laughed more and said, Perhaps what you call werewolves do exist but because of you humans I have to live outside of this effing body and I can't have one and can only borrow one even true werewolves have bodies then it asked can I borrow your body I screamed and my mom ran to me I told her what had happened and she got the Bible out and rebuked it in Jesus' name it has not been back I admit I have to get help still to this day over what happened to me I'm still seeing counselors and psychologists and I am medicated Sage rit rituals do not work. I have learned that. But the power of Christ did, and it hasn't came back. I hope that you all have learned something from my story. Yeah, I would say stay away from rituals, guys, with sage and mineral rocks and stuff like that. Yeah, they do hold powers, but they're not powers of protection. God didn't give us mineral rocks to protect us. He died on the cross for us and gave the power in his name and covered us in his blood to protect us. Using those other things for those reasons, to me, is no more than worshipping the golden calf. So, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. What's your opinions and what are your thoughts? Thank you for listening to another one, guys. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And we'll see you on the next one.